In the night of December 29 to 30, 1902, at 1:05 a.m., all pendulum clocks in Paris stopped, and the city dwellers felt dizzy, nauseous, and some even lost consciousness. So what happened in the capital of France on the eve of the new year? Why did time stop? This anomaly is amazing because the director of the Central Meteorological Station of the capital stated that no weather or atmospheric fluctuations were recorded. The Seismological Society also made a similar statement, assuring the public that there were no soil vibrations that night. But then what happened? Why did time stop? The work of pendulum clocks is always audible. They emit a rhythmic sound, but when they stopped making any sounds at 1 a.m. in Paris, it was immediately noticed. Moreover, the stop of the clocks was accompanied by a deterioration in the well-being of witnesses to what happened. Many felt very unwell, suddenly nausea appeared, their heads were spinning, and there were those who could not withstand the sudden deterioration in their well-being and fainted. This incident scared many residents not a little. In some areas, panic began due to the unexplained anomaly. In the first days of the new year, many capital newspapers in France came out with headlines on the front pages, with news of what had happened. People began to demand answers from the authorities, some themselves sought answers and offered various versions of what had happened. All versions of the failure are so incredible that it is difficult to believe them, and their evidence base is negligible. One version of what happened states that a certain journalist Jacques Lemoyne took up the search for the truth in 1998. He allegedly managed to find out that an unidentified object flew over Paris that night. According to this theory, aliens were conducting a psychological experiment. In addition, there is such a device in Paris called the Foucault pendulum. It clearly shows the rotation of the Earth. But what does this pendulum have to do with it? The fact is that only pendulum clocks stopped in the night of the Paris crash, while clocks with a different mechanism continued to function as if nothing had happened. And the journalist managed to find out that the pendulum behaved abnormally that night, repeatedly violating its trajectory. But as this theory claims, the journalist managed to find this out by questioning the granddaughter of the guard who was on duty that night. That is, all this does not hold up to any criticism, and in essence it is only words that do not prove anything. These theories collapse under a heap of leading questions. But there is another theory. Allegedly, that night Paris was pierced, like a needle, by a miniature neutron star. This is one of the end products of stellar evolution. But here, too, everything is too fantastic. A neutron star is a cosmic object that is formed after the explosion of a supernova. Moreover, after the explosion, different objects can be formed. This is both a neutron star and a black hole. In order for a neutron star to form, the initial mass of the exploded star must be 8 times greater than our sun, and in order for a black hole, then 40 times. But, both in the first case, and in the second, a supermassive cosmic object with an unimaginable density is formed. For example, a neutron star usually does not exceed 20 kilometers in radius, and its mass is comparable to the solar one. So this hypothesis does not fit. Another version of what happened states that this could be the result of experiments by Nikola Tesla. Allegedly, the Paris crash was the result of testing the Tesla Tower, which was a wireless telecommunications tower for non-commercial transatlantic telephony. And in the night from December 29 to 30, when in the USA on Long Island, in the evening Tesla was testing the tower, at that time it was already night in Paris, and this crash happened. However, the tower was never finished, because investors were afraid that this development could deprive them of their own capital and stopped funding. The tower stood unused until 1917, until it was demolished by explosion. Therefore, the version with the experiments of Nikola also does not hold up to any criticism. And it has recently become popular to blame the scientist for everything incomprehensible that happened in the first half of the 20th century. In general, he began to be attributed almost omnipotence. There is a version that all this is explained by an electromagnetic emission on the sun, which hit Paris so precisely and stopped the pendulum clock. But here, too, everything is somehow far-fetched. But what happened in Paris on the eve of 1903? We should probably start by trying not to explain the phenomenon, but to understand whether it existed at all. 
most likely, there was no time glitch. This is either an urban legend or a more modern invention and hoax.